Hi everyone and in this video we are going to be assembling and reviewing the universal heat press stand with wheels from Heat Press Nation and we're going to get started right now. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So glad to have you guys tuning in once again. And I just want to say before I go any further, I appreciate and I love and I truly, truly, truly am thankful for all of your comments and all of your supports on these videos. So thank you so much. And just to let you know, if you have any other ideas in terms of videos that you may want to see me present, feel free to leave those down in the comment section or reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook, I'll have them on the screen and let me know what videos you would like me to go in depth with or to provide more detail on and I will surely do them for you. So as I would have mentioned earlier in the intro, we are going to be assembling and reviewing the Universal Heat Press Stand with wheels from Heat Press Nation. Now the reason for getting this stand as you would know is because you want to make sure that when you're heat pressing shirts, let's say you have a hundred shirts to do or 50 shirts to do, you want to make sure that your posture is good, you want to make sure that your heat press is not too low, not too high, so you just want something that is just right for you. Now before I, I got this heat press stand here, I was using the box which came with the heat press you know, to keep the heat press up in the ear. And you will see that shortly in the video, uh, my setup that I was using. But now we have this universal heat press stand. I'm hoping and praying that it's gonna be way better than the standard box or my standard setup that I have at this moment. So just to give you some stats so you will know, um, the this stand this heat press table here is 32.5 inches in length it is 21.5 inches in width and it is 28 inches in height now without the wheels it is 24 inches in height and i'll have all those stacks and everything for you here on the screen as i normally do so that you guys can see what is going on so we're going to dive into on my table behind me as you can see here we're gonna go over there we're gonna check out this table we're gonna see what's going on do our little unboxing or unwrapping and we're gonna get deeper into the video so we're over here by the table now as promised and I'm gonna be ripping apart everything to show you what came in the box unfortunately I couldn't save the box because well the box was back and forth through shipping it was damaged so I just lifted out the box and I place it right here. So it, it comes firstly with the top part and this part is the top of the table. This is really, really heavy. So I'm gonna rip off this plastic. So I'm gonna bring you closer in now so you can see um, it came with a satisfaction or a satisfaction guarantee, a little note here. And it also came with is an instruction manual. So let me bring you guys a little closer so you can see what's actually inside this form. So we're here now, as I showed you before, your table comes with a, our satisfaction guarantee slip, a note, also with the instruction manual for setting up the table. As you can see here, the specifications of a table size, packaging size, table weight, and what it is suitable for. Also, we have a diagram to show us how to set it up. Now let's get over to our form and see what's in here. So clearly, we can see that they pack these very, very nice. And the first thing I will say is, take a look at these wheels here, guys. Take a look at these wheels. And I'm gonna just take out one of them. The wheels are nice and smooth. And what is amazing is that it has on that locking feature. So it is off right now, so the wheel will continuously um, be in motion. But when you turn it on, as you can see the on there, let's turn it on. It kind of like locks the wheel in place so it wouldn't be able to move. All right, let's take a look now at the legs. You can see, well packed. So we have the legs, four legs. We have 
these are some nuts, bolts, and washers here. And we have a spanner, two Allen keys. And that is just about it. And we have the bottom piece. I almost forgot the bottom piece of um, our table. So you would have seen the nuts and bolts before. But before we get started, I'm deciding to sort these here so it will make it much easier as I set up or assemble the table. So what I'm gonna do is to pour these out, separate them, and then get started. So we have some different size um, bolts here with some Allen key heads. So this is the bigger one. Then we have a much smaller one. So if you put them side by side, you can see the difference. Then we have two different types of washers. These flat washers here, you can see one is bigger than the next. Then we have some lock washers, two different sizes here. So we're just going to separate these and uh, some nuts. Different sizes, we have this one, and then we have a smaller size. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these to make my job much easier and you should also separate yours to make your job much easier. So as you can see clearly now, we have all of our nuts, our bolts, our washers separated and based on our instruction manual which you would have received in um, your package you can see clearly here it outlines the numbers the description and the quantity so it is always best to separate your your washers your nuts your bolts whatever the case is before you get started so we are now about to bolt our iron support posts which i have shown you earlier we have four of them we're going to bolt these down to the bottom part of our table they have four holes two on one side and two on the other and for these particular holes we're going to use the smaller nut with the allen key head we're going to use the smaller of the washers because they are different sizes um, i'm going to show you the difference you can see this one here and you can also see this one here so there is a difference so we're going to take our washer put our bolt inside our washer we're going to take the smaller little washer here along with a nut and then we are going to push it through the hole place your other lock washer at the back and I'm going to show you guys how the back looks and then I'm going to screw and tighten it as tight as possible so now we have done that first one what I will do is show you how the process looks from a different angle and at this stage what you want to do is you want to take the spanner that they would have sent you we have a 10 and a size 8 spanner here all in one you can see here on one side it says 10 and on the other side it says 8 now I'm believing this is mostly going to be a 10 nut yes it is you're going to take the smaller of the two allen keys you're going to place it inside there and you're going to put your 10 spanner onto your nut and you're going to tighten your nuts. Now you don't want to tighten them all the way up. What I would recommend is that you at least try to catch all first, make sure that all is in place. And then once they are fully in place, then you can tighten them completely and I'm going to do the same process for all four corners. I must also mention in the interest of time, if you actually have one of these cordless uh, screw machines or some person with may use a drilling machine and uh, actually buy a bit so you can actually use, this can also work to speed up the process much faster.
so we're here closer to the table right now and we have our four wheels and i must say i just love these red wheels here you know i can play with them all day but we have our wheels we have our nuts we have our bolts i had changed my bit on um my machine because these um bolt heads are much bigger you'll see there is much bigger so what we're gonna do is we are going to place our wheels at the corner where they're supposed to be and we're going to take our bolt we're going to screw it into the hole there's a hole right there so we're going to screw into that hole and this could take a little while that's why i'm going to use um the machine here and it also came with an allen key remember you have those allen keys that you can also use so we have a bigger allen key and you can just use that also and twist and twist until it's fully done once this is done we will go under and we will attach our nuts and our washers so we are now taking a closer look at the universal heat press stand after it has been assembled now at first glance i'm going to say this table stand here is beautiful it's really 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 sturdy it's really strong of course it took a little time to set up it had a lot of bolts a lot of washers a lot of screwing a lot of tightening to do but we accomplish it i love the wheels and one thing about the wheels um, that I mentioned earlier is that you can actually lock them so if you don't want your table to be moving around left right and center you can actually lock off the wheels and it will stay in its position now for the big moment we are going to place my HPN signature series heat press on this heat press table here and we're going to move up the old system so as I would have promised earlier I said to you I was going to show you exactly my old setup that I was using previously or using before now let's take a look at that setup so as you can see here in this corner you can see that this is my HPA signature series heat press here and it is just here on this box now I placed this sheet over it so you know it wouldn't look so bad but if I actually pull out the sheet you're going to see this is the heat press box along with the piece of plywood that comes with your heat press when you are first um, when you first get your heat press so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out that box we're gonna put our new universal heat press stand in this corner we are gonna put our heat press on our table and then we're gonna see how it looks So one concern I can tell you about when it comes to this heat press table and the heat press is because the bottom of our heat press is metal and of course the table is metal, we have a sliding competition going on. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Right now we have our wheels locked off so our table cannot be moved but take a look at what happens to our heat press. So basically in a nutshell, we can see that it's consistently moving back and forth, left to right, because it is metal on metal and it is sliding. I'm more sure when you purchase your um, heat press from Heat Press Nation or from any other company, it would normally come with some rubber tips so you can actually screw them on at the bottom to protect um, your heat press from scraping the bottom or from moving left, right and center, especially on tables like this. What I'm going to do is get those rubber tips, 
put on the bottom of my heat press. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna put a nice cloth over the table or a piece of plywood just to keep it sturdy and from moving backward and forward. A uh, plus on this table here for you is that you can actually put items under um, the table and store. So for example, I have a small little um, container here. I will just put it on there to give you guys a quick example. So you take your small little container if you have one. And you're ha you have the ability now to store your items under your uh, heat press table. And this is a plus for me guys so now i am able to put more stuff on the and store while i have the heat press on top so i want to thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys did enjoy it i hope that you guys weren't bored but let me know what you think about the universal heat press stand with wheels and if you're interested in getting one of these make sure to head down in the description section where you will see the link so you can get your table i highly recommend that you get one of these because when you're pressing it won't be too low it won't be too high but it would be just right so thank you guys for watching again and remember we do make your prints and fashions come alive